Hello, everybody. Hi, how are you? My name is Joe Wos. What a pleasure it is to be here. Uh, as I said, my name is Joe Wos. I'm a cartoonist from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the United States of America. And what a delight it is to be here remotely uh, at the Lakes Comic Arts Festival. Just such a great pleasure. I hope to be there in person uh, sometime soon. But for now, this will have to do. Well, a little bit about myself. I am a cartoonist. Uh, I've been a cartoonist my whole life. I am the visiting resident cartoonist of the Charles M. Schultz Museum in Santa Rosa, California for the past 18 years. Charles M. Schultz, of course, the cartoonist who created Snoopy. It was one of my heroes growing up. I am perhaps best known for my work in mazes. I have a feature called Maze Tunes, which are cartoon illustrated mazes and appear in newspapers all over the world. I have a series of best-selling maze books as well. I am also a cartoonist, a storyteller, and educator. And we're going to do a little bit of all that. Uh, I'm going to actually uh, teach you how to draw. We're going to play some games. And I'm going to tell you a story today, too. So uh, let's get ready to draw. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start drawing. Uh, I am working on a Wacom uh, Cintiq, uh, 22 inch. So that's what I'm working on, but all my drawing is live and I'm drawing uh, in Photoshop today. Let's start off with a little drawing game. All right, so if you'd like to follow along, let's, uh, let's see. Let's move the logo over there and let's say we add me into the camera so that you can see me. How about that? There we go. That way you can see me while I draw. All right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a little guessing game. Um, if you're watching, or is anybody a good speller? Raise your hand if you're a good speller. Okay, good. A few good. Right. Now, how many of you know your ABCs? Ah, you all, good. You all know your ABCs. Great. So at the top of the page, we're just going to put some letters, okay? So the first letter is A. J, E, U, I, O, V, M, G, period, and a dash. All right, can anybody tell me what that spells? Okay, it's tricky. You know what? Let me give you a hint. It is a very popular animal. I'm going to give you another hint. The letters are all scrambled and mixed up. You unscramble the letters and you make the animal. All right, I better give you the answer. That spells rabbit. What? Oh, see, here's the problem. You are used to writing words. I'm going to show you how to draw a word. Watch, listen, learn, do as I do. You'll be able to draw a rabbit too. Once upon a tune, there was an animal. Animal begins with letter A. So in the middle of my page, not too big, not too small. I just put a capital letter A. This particular animal loved to jump. Jump begins with J. Put a J under the A's to make an umbrella because it liked to jump in the rain. It liked to jump forwards, and it liked to jump backwards. So I put a letter J backwards. It liked to jump everywhere. Everywhere begins with E. So I put a letter E right there. Like to jump everywhere, and it liked to jump every day, which also begins with E. It liked to jump under. Under begins with U, so I put a U under the J's. 
I'd like to jump in. In begins I, put an I in the U. It could even do the 100 yard dash. Now, if something likes jump under, it might like to jump over. Over begins O, so put an O over and to the left of the A. If something likes jump in, it might like to jump out. Out begins O, put an O out here. And it would never, ever stop, period. Period here and a period here. Now, this particular rabbit had very, letter V, very, letter V again, very, very messy hair. In fact, he was a messy hair. Mess begins M, so I take the letter M over and over until it turns into a messy scribble. Now, it wouldn't be a stretch to say that this rabbit was great. Great begins a G, and I said stretch, so I'm going to take the letter G and stretch it. Long ears, short ears, fat ears, skinny ears, any way you draw it, that's just fine. It's your rabbit, not mine. And everyone loved this rabbit. Everyone begins with E. Now, the reason everyone loved this rabbit was because this rabbit is so good. Letter G backwards to everyone. Letter E backwards. This rabbit had a very fuzzy face that looked like this. And very, letter V, very, letter V again, very, very long whiskers. And O, what a good letter G. And great, letter G backwards, rabbit, he was. Sign your name, take pride in your work. There's your rabbit. So I like to use letters a lot in my drawings because it's a great way to teach because kids already know uh, your letters, your alphabet. You know how to read and write in most cases. So it's very easy to use letters then to draw too. See, drawing is a lot like learning to read or write. When you first learn to write, you're using lines to make letters. Put those letters together, they make words. Put the words together, they make sentences. Sentences put together the right way make a paragraph, and a paragraph tells a story. In drawing, we use lines to make shapes, shapes to make images, images to make pictures, and a picture is worth a thousand words. Let's try another one. Oh, this is one. I can actually take uh, the letters of just about any animal, and I can make that animal using those letters. So let's take owl, O, W, and L. So I'm going to use the letter O for eyes. Letter O, letter O. Now, a couple things about owls and cartoons. The first thing to keep in mind is that owls are nocturnal animals. Now, what does that mean, nocturnal? Well, basically it means they sleep all day and they party all night. So we need to make them look very sleepy and tired with heavy eyelids. The other thing is, in cartoons, owls are portrayed as being very, very smart. So in order to make someone look smart, we're going to add a little bit of costume, something to wear. We're going to give them glasses because it's a well-known, scientifically proven fact that very smart people always wear glasses. So we're going to take the letter L on its side, letter L on its side, and then we add the pupils, one and two. Next, for the beak, we're going to take the letter W and... Turn it on its side. looks like this. W. And then up, around, and connect. Next, we want to give them very bushy eyebrows because it is a well-known, scientifically proven fact that very, very smart people always have bushy eyebrows. So we're going to take the letter W over and over until it turns into a nice, messy scribble. Same thing here. Now the sides of the head, we come down, add a W, down, add a W, and then work our way across. W, 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 W. Next are the wings. Wings begins with letter W, so W and W. Next, a line from the left wing to the right wing like that. A little bit of texture, just some W's to create the illusion of feathers. The legs, letter L, letter L, and then around with a W on its side, around with a C and up. Same thing on the side, or in, out, around, and up, and then a little bit of texture Last thing we're going to do is we're going to add another bit of caution. We're going to add what's called a mortarboard, uh, better known as a graduation cap. Draw a line here, then up, 
There's the L. Over, up, down. You're going to color all that in like that. Add a line down. O, W. Sign your name. Take pride in your work. There is your owl. Well, I'm going to show you another fun exercise I like to do in a drawing. It's uh, just taking doodles and turning them into pictures. And a lot of times what I'll do is I will just put a scribble like that. Uh, it can be anything at all. There's, there's no wrong way to scribble. Um, but I try not to note what it's going to be. I just sort of put some lines at a page and see what happens. So, and then I look for what's familiar to me. Eyes, a nose, a mouth, something I'd see at school or at a zoo. And then I take my scribble and I turn it into a drawing. <laughs> and there's our dog. So you can use letters, you can use lines, you can use scribbles, you can use shapes. There's lots of ways uh, you can learn how to draw. Well, I want to share a story with you uh, and draw it as I tell it. But before I do, I thought I would teach you how to draw one of the characters in the story. We're going to learn how to draw the main character. The main character is a duck. And his name is Don. So this is how to draw Don the Duck. We are going to start with the eyes. So we have letter O and then a letter C. Next up, you have a period here and a period here. Now line out down, up, dash. Good. Two lines here. One, two. Line down, up, line down, up, and around to connect. Good job. Next, we're going to just add the tongue in here like this. All right. And now uh, go ahead and fill in right there. You can color that in. For the head, a little bit of texture, just a back and forth, back and forth, and then in, and then eyebrows. One, two, one, two. Two lines down for the neck. Out. One, two, three. Around and up. Two little lines on the stomach, and then basically line up a letter W and a line down. Then the other wing out, thumb, one, two, three, and in. Let's change the expression a little bit with some eyelids. One line down, two lines down, one line down, two lines down for the legs. Letter C out, letter W on its side, and in. Again, letter C backwards, out, letter W on its side, and in. One, two, one, two. Sign your name. Take pride in your work. There's your dot. Well, I would like to tell you a story about this here guy. A lot of my stories revolve around the idea of, of having dreams, of wanting to be something different or special. I think it's because when I was growing up, more than anything in the world, I wanted to be a cartoonist. And I knew that was probably a, a silly dream or a hard to achieve dream, but I didn't care. I was going to do it no matter what. And um, I think that's why so many of my stories have to do with these characters with, with high and lofty ambitions. And Don the Duck is no exception. 
So I'd like to tell you a story about Don the Doc. It begins, all my stories do, once upon a tune. So everybody watch and listen. Once upon a tune, there was a doc named Don. Now Don was a good doc, and Don was a nice doc. But Don, well, Don had a problem. You see, Don didn't want to be a doc. Don didn't like being a duck. Nope. More than anything in the world, Don wanted to be a rooster. And Don would say to himself, Oh, I'd give anything to be a rooster. I'd be such a good rooster. I'd practice crowing every morning, and I'm, I'm not afraid of heights, so I can climb up that great big rooftop, and I'd give anything to be a rooster, you see. Nobody ever notices the duck on a farm. But everybody knows the rooster because the rooster's the one who wakes everybody up. Well, I wonder. I wonder if I go ask that nice Mr. Chicken if he'll teach me how to crow so that I can be a rooster. And that's exactly what Dawn did. Dawn went to go see that nice Mr. Chicken. Now the chicken lived high up on a rooftop. And Dawn climbed all the way up that ladder. He crawled out to the edge of the roof. And then he called out, Oh, Mr. Chicken, Mr. Chicken. And the chicken said, What do you want, Don? Mr. Chicken, will you please, please teach me how to crow so that I can be a rooster? Teach you how to crow so that you can be a rooster. You're a duck. You can't be a rooster. That's, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. Besides, I never really wanted to be a rooster. I don't like being a rooster. Do you know what it's like being a rooster? You have to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning every day. You have to climb up this great big ladder, crawl out to the edge of the roof, and then you crawl your lungs out. I never wanted to be a rooster. My brother Ernie, Ernie, he was supposed to be the rooster in the family, but he took one look at how high this roof was, and he turned chicken. He turned chicken and he crossed the road. We never found out why. I never wanted to be a rooster. I don't like being a rooster, you see. I've always wanted to be... A graceful swan ballerina. Oh, I'd be such a good ballerina. Dancing out on that stage in my tutu. Dawn, can you teach me how to dance like a graceful swan? If you do, I'll teach you how to crow so that you can be a rooster. And Don said, I'm a duck. Not a swan. I'm a duck. But maybe, maybe I can find someone to teach you how to dance. If I can find someone to teach you how to dance, will you please, please teach me how to crow so that I can be a rooster? And the chicken said, I will, it's a deal. And so Dawn set out in search of a swan. Now Dawn knew where to find all the swans, down on the lake, Swan Lake. And he went down to the lake and he called out, Oh, Miss Swan, Miss Swan. And the swan said, What can I do for you, Dawn? Miss Swan, will you please, please teach a chicken how to dance so the chicken will teach me how to crow so that I can be a rooster? The swan said, teach a chicken to dance. Oh, chicken, he's a chicken. What's he going to do? Dance chicken lake? He's a chicken. It's the silliest thing I've ever heard of dancing chicken. Besides, I never really wanted to be a graceful swan ballerina. I don't like being a graceful swan ballerina. You see, I've always wanted to be... An opera singer. Oh, I'd be such a wonderful opera singer. I have a lovely voice. Rarely I do. Don, can you teach me how to sing opera? If you do, I'll teach the chicken to dance, and the chicken will teach it to crow. And Don said, I'm a duck. Not an opera singer. I'm a duck. But maybe, maybe I can find someone to teach you how to sing. If I can find someone to teach you how to sing, will you please, please teach the chicken how to dance so the chicken will teach me to crow so that I can be a rooster? The swan said, I will, it's a deal. So Dawn set out in search of an opera singer. Now, it's very easy to find a chicken in a barnyard. It's not hard at all to find a swan on a farm. It is, however, extremely tough to find an opera singer. And Dawn said, what am I going to do? I'll never find a sing- an opera singer, never. But then Dawn heard some singing. La, 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 la. That sounded like opera. It hurt my ears. It must be opera. La, 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 la. And he followed the singing into the stable. And there in the stable was the horse, of course. And Don said, oh, Mr. Horse, Mr. Horse. I didn't know you could sing opera. 
And the horse said, Why, of course, I sing opera. I was in a world-famous horse opera. It was called La Bovine. And I was world-renowned. But sadly, I had to give up singing because <gasps> I had a horse throat. Oh, Mr. Horse, Mr. Horse, will you please, please do me a favor? Will you please, please teach a swan how to sing? So the swan will teach a chicken to dance. So the chicken will teach me to crow. So that I can be a rooster. And the horse said, of course, Don, anything for you. But will you do just one favor for me? And Don said, oh, good grief. Let me guess. You want to be a tap dancing hippopotamus. And the horse said, no, no, nothing else will. I'm a very old horse. And by the time I wake up in the morning, I am the last one to make it to breakfast. Can you arrange it so that I am the first one to wake up every morning? And Don said, I can do that. I can do that. Why, when I'm the rooster, I'll wake you up before anyone else. And the horse said, then I will. It's a deal. And so the horse taught the swan to sing. And the swan taught the chicken to dance. And the chicken taught Don to crow. And that night they put on a wonderful show. First the horse and swan got up to sing. It was a lovely opera, a beautiful swan song. And then it was the chicken's turn to dance. Oh, you never saw such a beautiful dancing chicken in all your life. Such line, such form, such movement, such a beauty. Why, it was it was poultry in motion. Well, they had a good time that night, and they put on a good show. Next morning, Don woke up before any of the others. He went over and he woke up the horse just like he promised. And then he started to climb up that great big rooftop. He climbed all the way up the ladder. He crawled out to the very, very edge of that roof. And as he stood there, loudly and proudly, Don crowed, <gasps> Quack-a-doodle-doo! Not too bad for a duck. In fact, all the animals on our farm thought Don did a pretty good job as a rooster. So good a job that they decided to make Don the official rooster of that barnyard. And that morning, and every morning thereafter, every animal on that farm woke up at the quack of dawn. The end. That's the story of Dawn on the Farm. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story, and I hope you enjoyed some of the drawing lessons I was able to do for you today. Um, I want to thank you so much for letting me be here, a part of your wonderful festival. Uh, you can check out more of what I do at howtotune.com. And I hope to see you again real soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>